Hello, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. A little while back I published a YouTube video of a trip I made to the Roaches in Staffordshire. If you haven't ever been to the Roaches, I really recommend it, it's great for photography. There's lots of interesting rock formations, but you need to be prepared to share it with climbers. On this occasion, the weather was really thick fog for most of the day, and we took most of the shots in the surrounding forest. Towards the end of the day, the fog started to lift quite a bit, but it sort of hung like a thick carpet across the uh, the sky, and it seemed to be pressing down on you. This gave the impression of a really heavy sky, and gave me the idea for the image I'm going to show you today. Now, since I published this image, it's become one of my personal favourites for the year. It also seems to have resonated with a few of you out there watching the videos, as I've had quite a few requests to explain how I went about processing it. So today, I'm going to share a little bit more information. The image was captured using a Fuji X-T2 shooting RAW format, and it's actually four images which have been stitched together in Lightroom. So here you can see the four images. I'm going to select all four now, so I click on the first, and then I click on the last holding down my mouse. I can now right click and select the photo merge and panorama. I'm now going to use this boundary wrap here and just move that out and it fills in the gaps around the image just wrapping the edges out. And now I'll just click merge. With the images stitched together now, I can actually switch to the develop modules. So I'll select the image, switch over, and this is the image I can work on. The first thing I'm going to do is select the crop tool to change the image size. I don't like all this white space over on the right, so I'm going to crop here and use rule of thirds to position the climber here. Next, I'm going to change the camera colour profile in the camera calibration tab. Now even though I'm going to be converting the image to black and white, it's often beneficial to do this because it gives a better effect. The profile I'm going to select is the Provia standard profile. Now unless you're processing a Fuji RAW file yourself, you won't have the same camera calibration profiles as me. The default option is Adobe Standard, but it's worth experimenting with some of the other profiles that you have here. If you see the word embedded here, it actually means that you're editing an image file rather than a RAW file, and the profile is already embedded in the image. Now I can move on and select the sky using the gradient tool, because I want to darken this. And I'm going to darken it by a combination of the exposure and dehaze tools. Now if you don't have dehaze, because it's a relatively new tool, try using clarity and contrast. It can sometimes give a good effect, but dehaze is by far the best for creating a moody sky. Next, I'm going to add a new gradient, and I'm going to select this to cover the foreground rocks. This is going to allow me to use this shadow slider to open up the rocks, which are too dark. Add in a bit of clarity as well. Now, if I turn this to a black and white image without actually making this correction, the rocks will just turn into a black mass and they'll lose a lot of interest. Finally, I'm going to tweak the tones and colours in the image using the basic panel. OK, so that's my basic adjustments done. If I was going to be producing a large image print from this, I'd be sharpening the image properly as well. But I, this is such a large file and I'm going to reduce it in size so it can display on a monitor, I'm going to leave out the sharpening step. To open the image in Photoshop, I'm going to now right-click, 
select editing and editing Adobe Photoshop. Now that I have the image in Photoshop, I'm going to use Nick Silver Effects Pro to convert it to black and white. First, I'm going to use the selective tool here to select Silver Effects Pro. And this causes a new window, sorry, a new layer to be added in the layers window in Photoshop. Once in Silver Effects, I like to check these presets. And I've actually found that number 19, Fine Art Process, gives a good result. With a good base set, I can move on to set a colour filter. And I like the effect of the yellow filter, but it's not really strong enough, so I'm going to increase it here. I also think the vignette around the image needs to be a lot stronger. So I'm going to select the vignette and I'm actually going to go for, in this case, Lens Fall Off 2. Now that seems to approve the look of the image, but it's still too light here in the center. I'm going to correct this now with the Burn Edge tool and I'll select the top edge. I can now darken the top of the sky using this edge. The transition there just softening it up. And finally, I want to actually make the image a little darker. It's looking too light, so I'll use the mid-tone here. I'm happy with that now. I could make some further adjustments using some of the other options here, such as dynamic brightness and also the soft contrast adjustment a little bit more and even amplify some whites and even blacks. But the image is good, so I'm now going to click OK and return to Photoshop. So there you have the finished image. You can compare it with the starting image. It's quite dramatic. I hope you found that interesting and helpful. Please keep watching for more photography advice and if you have any special requests just email me or leave a comment on the video. Thanks for watching.